back to another freaking banger video, guys. Today we're gonna be doing perhaps the most common modification for any E36 ever, which is an M3 MTech bumper. You can see I got it fit in the back there, nice. Now to be clear, today is not the final installation. Next episode we'll be prepping it, paint matching it, installing it on the car for the last time. This episode is more to hopefully help you out. If you have an E36 and you have a messed up front bumper or you want something that looks a little bit better, you might be wondering if that $175 bumper on Amazon is complete garbage. I don't know, I haven't opened up the package yet, but today we're here to figure that out. I'm driving over to my trusty parents' house because they have all the tools, and then we're gonna look at the fit and finish, we're gonna install it on the car, we're gonna see how it does, so I'll see you then. All right, first order of business. Let's unbox this bad boy. Okay, so I got this specific bumper from DNA Motoring on Amazon. There are a number of E36 M3 style bumpers on Amazon, all around the $175 to $200 mark. As far as I'm aware, those ABS M3 style bumpers are all, I think, made by the same person. And they're just sold by different vendors, a lot like how on eBay, a bunch of different vendors sell the same thing. I can't guarantee that, but chances are, if you order an M3 bumper on Amazon for your E36, you're probably gonna get something pretty similar to this. This arrived in only six days, thank you Amazon. I ordered it December 15th, it got here December 21st, so that was even during the Christmas rush. If you order it during the summer or something, you'll probably get it even faster. And just to be clear, nobody sent me this, I paid my own money for it. So I'm gonna give you my completely honest um, interpretation of this bumper. Now it came packaged in this honestly surprisingly nice box. Given how cheap it is, I was definitely expecting the world's worst packaging job. But honestly, this feels like a pretty useful box to have around. I'm probably gonna keep my old bumper in this, so I'm gonna try my best to preserve the box as I unbox it. <laughs> Okay, here is everything that comes in the box. First impressions, this looks great. I mean, especially for the price point, this looks almost identical to any OEM bumper that you would get unpainted from the factory. Obviously, I'll find out the real quality of it when I actually go to paint it, but so far, everything looks smooth. There's no mold lines. Everything looks trimmed correctly. Also in the box is the front grille, as well as these brackets. I think those are for the fog lights. So it feels to me like a relatively complete kit. Now, one thing that I'll point out that is actually maybe kind of important to mention is that the front lip does not come off. I am relatively certain that on OEM M3s, those two parts were actually completely separate things. This is kind of a bummer because I would have liked to be able to take off this lip so that I could paint the bumper all as one and then pop back in the trim pieces, pop on the lip and call it a day. But masking that off won't be a big deal. And actually a lot of the aftermarket lips go on top of this OEM lip anyway. So it's not a huge deal. All in all, I think this came excellently packaged, especially given the price point. This plastic they used is nice and thick. The plastic quality seems pretty nice. Overall, all things considered, I'd give it a thumbs up. All right, before we go any further, I gotta get this OEM bumper off. I believe it's a couple bolts here and back here. I don't know, I'll figure it out. But we gotta get that off of there before we can test fit this. Hoping for the best. Alright, so everything came off relatively easily. I think there are supposed to be about six of these self-tapping screws, and those screw into these little tabs right here. As you can tell, my fender liner is uh, a bit wonky right now, but most of the rest of the mounts are in good shape. My one question is this. I believe these little slots lock in here, and it's kind of a brake duct that sends air back to the brakes. But honestly, I don't think it was clipped in. And I'm kind of curious about this wire right here. If anyone in the comments is an E36 expert, and you know what that sensor is, let me know. The good news is that this bumper appears to also have the exact same tabs. So we should be able to maintain that duct without having to do any major alterations to this bumper. Okay, it's about that time to put this on there. I'm gonna take you through the whole process and together we can figure out if this bumper fits like garbage. Okay. 
Okay, finally got the metal bumper structure out of that. I don't know if you could tell, but these little plastic clips suck. I only managed to get, what, four of them out without breaking them. The rest just shattered into a million pieces. I mean, it makes sense, 1998 plastic. But I'm gonna try my best to replace all of this with metal hardware anyway, so it's no big deal. Next order of business, I'm gonna put this whole structure in the new bumper. I am gonna leave the fog lights in that bumper until next week, because next week's video, we're painting this whole thing. So we need to take it all apart anyway. Might as well save a little bit of time and a little bit of work. Here it is, all mounted up. Not really, I mean, we still have to button up this stuff. I wanna tape up the fog light wires because I will be running this bumper unpainted for one week. And then next week, we're gonna do a whole video on paint matching this bumper. Other than that, it's all installed, look at that. I gotta say, from a fitment perspective, this is great. My biggest issue with this entire installation was those stupid plastic pins that hold the plastic bumper to the metal support behind it. But that's not the fault of this bumper. This bumper fit perfectly onto that metal support. And I gotta say, the panel gaps look great. This side's gonna be slightly more supported once we bolt everything up. But honestly, this panel gap is better than it looked from the factory. This guy definitely, uh, didn't fit the best. And then over on this other side, you can see I need to bolt in the liner, but again, pretty good panel gap. I mean, this is like kind of what you got from the factory anyway. So I would say from a first impression perspective, this has been a great success. I would just say, if you're thinking about buying this bumper, get ready to find some really flat washers and bolts so that you can replace those stupid plastic clips and make sure they're flat enough to hide behind some of the trim pieces here. Okay, I'm going to finish up the last few bolts, get this thing 100% installed, and then we'll wrap up the video with some final thoughts and maybe a little bit of a cinematic montage, who knows? I'm gonna get it all buttoned up and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of let this footage roll as I give you my final thoughts on this bumper. For $175, it's really good. Is it the highest quality bumper in the world? No, definitely not. The front impact strips, for example, don't fit nearly as well as OEM, but it's not something that you would ever notice unless you really, really scrutinized a car super up close. Another thing I'll say about those impact strips is that on OEM bumpers, they have a little bit of texture to them, and on this bumper, they're completely smooth, and generally that's a telltale sign that an E36 M3 bumper is not OEM. That said, it doesn't really bother me personally because the side impact impact stripping on my car doesn't have any texture on it anyway, so it actually ends up matching a little bit better than OEM. Overall, I'd say the biggest strength of the bumper is fitment to the car. The panel gaps, like I mentioned, look better than OEM. And I would say the biggest drawback to this bumper is that that front lip is not removable. Now, would I recommend this bumper so far? Uh, yeah. I think if you want something shipped to you quickly and something that's relatively high quality, I don't think you can go too wrong with this other than the front lip issue. On the other hand, there are other options not on Amazon. So if you're okay waiting a little bit longer, I think Turner Motorsport sells an M3 bumper of their own. That's also ABS, it's not fiberglass or anything, and it has a removable front lip and comes with everything that came with this bumper as far as I know. So that option, along with some other similar options online that you can find not on Amazon, those might be a better option if you want to run a different front lip that replaces the OEM one. Overall, I'd give this bumper an eight out of 10, and I hope this overview was at least a little bit helpful. Now I'm gonna hand it off to editing Logan to wrap up the video. Okay, that's it for today's video. If you liked the video, make sure to like the video. If you really liked the video, make sure to subscribe. I make a new video every single week. Thank you so much for spending your time watching this video, and I will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>